you came here for this presentation. You're like, Diego, get off the stage. And I'm more than happy to. So I'm going to hand this off to Jan, who's going to take us through Web Often. Web Often. Guys, there should be vowels there somewhere, but I'm not going to ask you to justify that. Uh, so go ahead and uh, why don't you take us through this? Let's give him a hand. All right. Thank you. So I'm going to do to talk about passwords and the new web authentication thing. But first of all, a short introduction to myself. Uh, my name is Jan. I'm a founder of NitroKey. What we do is open source hardware made in Germany. We basically produce and develop USB keys for data encryption, uh, cryptographic key usages like HSMs, and of course, two-factor authentication and passwordless authentication, which I'm going to talk about today. Uh, but first of all, a, a picture how it looks. What we do is devices, so that you know what we are talking about. USB devices, USB keys like this, but not ordinary thumb drives. Um, so, why to use passwords? I guess everybody who has ever written any application or web service has introduced some, for at least if you have some user management or anything like that, some access control, you have introduced some passwords. Um, they are easy to implement. Everybody knows how they work. They work out of the box on any platform on, on where your application or your web service is supported. So it's super easy thing. So why not to use them? There are a few reasons. Um, we all are aware that they are inherently insecure, or at least it's hard to make them secure. So it's easy to use them insecurely. Say you share an easy to remember password among a couple of services, but it's insecure. So what are you are going to do to have it more secure is to have a longer passphrase individually for each service, which you can't remember then anymore if you use more, say, than 10 services. So you need some way of password manager or something like this. So it can become very complicated quickly. Um, it doesn't scale. And uh, you don't have any form of phishing protection, which uh, is, is a threat uh, we can address by more modern methods like WebAuthn, I'm going to talk about soon. And uh, one thing I am I want to highlight is convenience. So usually when we talk about security, making things more secure, it comes with a trade-off of usability. So often it's like, do you want to have something secure or easy to use? And I think here, now we are at a point, and in 2019 we are at a stage where we can have a solution which is more secure and more easy to use than before. And I think this has a, in the long term, can be a very effective, very huge leverage. So after, say, kind of after passwords or an add-on to passwords are one-time passwords, uh, which uh, you can use with Google Authenticator. This is one of the most popular forms of using one-time passwords. Um, it's supported by many of the large websites by today. Uh, you can have clients on every platform. You can have USB security keys to use one-time passwords as well. Um, the setup is, or the, the architecture is based on a shared secret among the client and the server. So it's not super modern. Also this standard is goes back, say, 15 years ago about. Uh, and how it works is basically it's a hash which is calculated over the time and this shared secret so that then once um, um, a, a client logs in to a server, the client side can do the calculation and the server can do the same and do the comparison. So it's, mm, well, not so super easy to use. It's good and easy enough for us to use it, I believe, but maybe not for every average computer user, say my mom, so to speak, uh, because you usually need some way of additional software, as I said, like Google Authenticator or some other things. And you don't have any form of phishing protection. Then there was and there is FIDO Universal Second Factor, better known as FIDO U2F. This comes as a second factor authentication in addition to your passwords. So f services and web applications can decide to uh, require this mechanism in addition to your user username and password. It's a kind of more modern one-time password because it's more easier to use. It has support being built in by most modern web browsers. 
Um, um, it has a more modern cryptographic architecture where you don't have a shared secret among client and server, but more uh, a public, uh, public key cryptography, which you usually would do as of today. And nice benefit is the phishing protection. Um, I will explain shortly how this works. And um, another thing which mo many people are not aware of is some form of privacy protection. So what has been designed in the specification is that a specific website is not able to track you as a user among multiple websites um, because there's not a single identity, but for each website there's an individual cryptographic key or cryptographic identity on the client side. Um, and therefore, it can't be tracked among uh, multiple th websites. Yeah. Um, usually, the, it's not demanded by the specification, but most implementations I'm aware of do it this way, is that there is not a fixed amount of storages available in the, on the client side, but there's a mechanism to derive those keys dynamically. Um, um, when I talk about this key, I mean the client-specific key is derived dynamically on the context. Therefore, you can use it with an unlimited amount of websites or, or accounts. Um, as I said, it is supported by most browsers, but it's not, or so far it has been a kind of proprietary extension to browsers, which, is, uh, or which has been changed with the web out N. Uh, but looking backward, it has been kind of proprietary. Therefore, not so many websites supported it this way. Um, the usability was good still, though, because it was supported by browsers. And the browser was aware of this mechanism and then had um, specific windows and queries to the user, like uh, connect now your FIDO U to F device and press a button and things like that. So you didn't have to use any additional software. Uh, how it works, I'm, I'm not going too much into detail here, though even you, I think you, you can't read it very well, but just on a high level, you have um, um, this high level flow, you will see over all the other FIDO mechanisms I'm going to talk about. So on the right side, you see the server. Do I have a pointer here, by the way? Here. Here's a server, which sends and we have a web browser and we have a FIDO device, like a FIDO dongle, perhaps a USB dongle or Bluetooth dongle. So the server sensor, uh, sorry, here we are in the registration process. So this is the initial registration of a user who wants to add his FIDO U2F device to his account. Uh, it's not the login procedure yet. So what the server does, it sends basically a, a challenge and its own ID, it's called origin, which you can think of kind of as the domain name. It sends this to the browser. The browser verifies this origin or app ID, um, which is effectively the phishing protection. So if, a, um, if the app ID does not match to the domain of the particular website, the browser would reject the request. So it verifies that the uh, domain matches the app ID. Then uh, this request is sent over to the USB dongle, the FIDO dongle. Um, the user confirmation means the user usually has to press or touch the device, which indicates he, is, he wants to confirm this request, he wants to do the, do the registration. Uh, what the device then does is it generates or derives a website and account-specific cryptographic key pair. Uh, it's elliptic curve key pair and do a cryptographic signature over a couple of parameters and sends it back. It sends back a public key, a key handle, the signature, also attestation key, so that the server can do a verification that the response matches the request and register now this key handle to the user's account. And then in login, during the login or authentication flow, it's pretty similar. Uh, the server sends a, set, uh, a challenge and his app ID and also the key handle. He has been registered with the user account previously and during the registration. And then the flow is pretty much the same. User confirmation, um, retrieval or de 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 derivation of the key and a signature and this is sent back so that the server can do uh, the verification. Again, it sees 
the response matches the request, it matches um, also a counter, and the user is logged in. So, um, relatively simple. And now it's uh, FIDO 2. That's a pretty new standard. It has been, uh, I think version 1.0 one has been released this year. Um, what you can think of is this FIDO U2F. So this is two-factor authentication. Again, this is in used to be in addition to username and password. And this FIDO 2 now is the same as FIDO U2F, but also a couple of more things, most namely the passwordless authentication. And this um, can become very interesting because th with this passwordless authentication, you as a web developer or app developer can replace username and password. Or first of all, you can replace passwords so that a user does not re need to remember any specific uh, password for, your, for his account or for your website. Uh, what he usually would remember uh, or what we require to remember is a device-specific PIN. And this can, so device, when I talk about device, I'm talking about a FIDO device. And this device-specific PIN can be, or is in unique for the device and has nothing to do with a specific website. So you a user only need to remember one PIN and not hundreds of passwords anymore. And it can be short, short thing. It doesn't need to be a long passphrase. Um, Username less authentication is some very similar to the passwordless authentication um, with a different that, uh, so to speak, the username is also provided by the server so that the user does not has to even enter his username. It only needs to deal with the FIDO device to log in and the username is then provided to the server. Um, uh, the, it's possible to use it in theory with the different types of devices. USB dongle is one type, a TPM or some biometric um, built-in or external device or other options within this FIDO2 standard. And it, uh, it's primarily written for the web, but not necessarily um, exclusively for the web, so it can be also used for apps or local native applications. Um, uh, usability is great. Um, going to talk about this later. Acceptance, as of now, is quite poor. I'm aware of Microsoft, who has the most um, acceptance on, first of all, on Microsoft Web Services, and second, on Windows 10 local machine login. So it's very neat, uh, because people don't need to remember a um, password to access a local computer anymore, but can log in with a FIDO device or FIDO2 device. And beside of Microsoft, I'm not aware of any um, website or service which is supported by now. But I think this will change uh, very soon. Um, now, what is web out n or web authentication? Web out n is, is, is short. It's, it's th this diagram should explain it a little bit better. When we have the server and the browser, the web authentication specification defines the API um, on the browser side, which you as a website developer would use. Um, behind, kind of behind this web out N are this FIDO U2F or FIDO2, which are where were renamed in CTAP1 and CTAP2. And that's a protocol between the browser and, uh, say, the USB dongle or built in TPM functionality of the laptop. Um, so, web out N is kind of the um, the, the, the keyword to, co to address all of this. And it's uh, not just specified in 2019 this year, it's also implemented by all large web browsers. Um, even Safari, the latest version, uh, implemented it just, just a few weeks ago or something like that, a few months. How it works? First of all, I have to check the time. Um, I'm, again, I'm not going to talk about this in, in, in very detail, but you see from the bird view, it's a very similar flow to the FIDO U2F flow with, a, um, f of course, a few changes. Uh, first of all, the terminology has been changed. Now we are not talking about a server anymore, but a relying party can be also a, a local app, perhaps. Um, also, the USB dongle or other implementation is called Authenticator. The client um, is usually the web browser. 
then the request um, has more options. So the relying party or web server can uh, specify um, certain parameters what he wants from the authentication. This um, has a beauty that uh, the server can decide on the particular use case what he wants. Perhaps um, for login, it won't just um, say a fingerprint on the device, but if you go to some mm, on the website to some certain high security areas or so, perhaps you want to have a second login, perhaps you want to have a, um, some biometric verification or something like this. So the web server has a possibility to request whatever he wants even after the initial login through this parameterization. Um, so for the registration, again, this is a um, registration means when a user wants to pair a FIDO2 device with his user account. Um, the, here again, a couple of parameters. Uh, we have kind of phishing protection by the browser who verifies the relying party against the origin. Um, we have now here a hash is calculated, which is more detail, and then we have a user confirmation or verification. Um, this sounds pretty much the same, can, but in practice can be different things. Um, a confirmation usually means there has to be a confirmation, like pressing a button that the user really wants to approve and wants to execute this operation, usually this login operation, or in this case, a registration operation. But the user verification is on the web out and describes something different. It's more like verifying that the user is really the user he, he claims to be. And depending on the FIDO2 device, there are different mechanisms to ensure the verification. It can be entering the device pin I mentioned earlier. It can be um, using some biometrics like a fingerprint to verify that the user is really the user. Um, the, 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 say, the owner of the FIDO2 device. Uh, then again, a cryptographic key pair is generated, as a signature is calculated, and the response is being sent back to the relying party who does the verification. And then the actual login procedure um, or authentication looks again similar. Here, first and second factor refers to the second factor refers to FIDO U2F mechanism, and the first factor refers to passwordless authentication. So actually it's not just a first factor, like a password is more a first and second factor. But the flow is very much similar. Um, it, the difference are only the parameters. This is why it's here combined on a single slide. Um, the relying party sends a challenge, a name of the relying party itself. The browser, again, does a phishing uh, uh, protection by verifying the relying party against the origin. Um, perhaps some credentials or um, um, the parameter of whether user verification is required or not is, is transferred. And again, the authenticator does whatever is re required to log in, say, requiring just press of the button or some pin and then the response is sent back to the relying party who does a verification against the uh, key pair which has been registered with the user account in the previous step, in the registration step. So for username less authentication, the main difference is that here on the client side, the think of it as a web browser, the web browser um, it would show to the user a kind of user interface, a kind of window um, where the user can select the identity he wants to use to log into this particular website. So the, yes, there is um, a username involved, but it's not involved on the website anymore. It's only client side. So the brow it's a native window of the browser. Um, I, I think this feature by now is only supported by Google Chrome. I'm not sure about this. So this is kind of ex um, more advanced features of Web Out N. Earlier I said all major browsers do support Web Out N, which is true, but I think those um, more advanced features are not supported by all. Uh, I hope this is going to change. Then 
the user selects which ID he wants to use to log into this particular website, and then the similar flow is executed as previously. Um, here, in the response, the web servers or the relying party also gets the username, of course. The username he, the user has chosen here. Now, uh, what to use? Um, this is kind of summary slide. Uh, pretty much my last or second last slide, so that we may have a minute for questions, perhaps. Um, I think password authentication is for simple projects, for pro projects without any security focus. I think there will be a shift among the ecosystem that more and more websites and apps are moving to one way or the other of this web out and authentication mechanism so that the mm, ac ac acceptance or uh, what user actually demand from websites is going to shift towards a web out and based authentication for security critical or on users view for their important websites. So OTP I won't recommend to implement uh, anymore. It's, if it's there, it may be good, it may be sufficient, but I won't recommend you guys to implement it in any uh, new projects anymore. But instead of o uh, OTP use either web out and with second factor, so FIDU2F, or use what I described as this passwordless authentication or even username-less authentication. Um, however, this requires more implementation effort. There are, not, there are some, a couple of, bina um, of libraries available, say at GitHub or somewhere else in the, in the internet you can use, depending on your programming language, but there are not so many, so it's still some pioneering if you're going to implement it. Uh, and also, if you're looking at um, this passwordless authentication, key, um, make sure that the web browsers your user or customers use uh, really support this. So, here we have a couple of references. Um, the first one is can be very helpful for OTP, but also for web out, and it provides an overview of um, uh, popular and non-popular of a of couple of hundred websites and provides an overview which type of mechanism they are going to support. With mechanism, I mean either OTP or web out and slash uh, FIDO mechanism. So this can be a good starting point if you want to decide as a user uh, which uh, secure authentication mechanism you may want to use. Uh, then the other is more for developers who want to look into the um, specification itself or maybe prior to looking into the specification read on this guy here. He has a couple of good introductions, not only the single one here but also come some other follow-up blog post about web out and um, yeah that's it from my side. Do we have time for questions? I think this means we do have time for questions. Okay, any questions? Uh, hi, thank you for your uh, speak. How to validate the origin against the domain name? Um, how is this um, validism realized? Um, this is implemented by the browser. So you as a developer don't, uh, so to speak, don't need to care about it. Yes, you do need to understand how the validation is done, say if the subdomain is considered or, or not, Th those kind of things you do need to know, but you don't need to implement anything around this. This is, comes out of the box. Um, one thing which is required is HTTPS, so it, FIDO and WebOIDN won't work with H plain HTTP. Uh, and for the subdomain things, I think there are some better explanations visually where you can, uh, which you f can, can find that there are some tables with examples. This is um, more easy to understand than me here in the in the open space. Uh, follow the references, and you will find it. So thank you for the nice talk. Um, do you know an overview about uh, tokens which support FIDO2? Um, as there, I, I searched a bit, and it was a big chaos of uh, sources and information. Which uh, and it seems that some is not up to date. Uh, some sources are not up to date, and uh, it's hard to find uh, which features are supported by which FIDO2 keys. 
so the information of which device supports FIDO2 in general is available here. Uh, first of all, our own NitroKey FIDO2 device is available. Then also to name SoloKey, which is kind of related other open source project to YubiKey as a big competitor as well. And uh, I also a couple of others. I, th I think the next question was here. Uh, are you I'm next. Um, I recently implemented WebAuf N as a proof of concept for my company, and I was very surprised that uh, Safari on macOS was able to bypass the pin required for passwordless login. Is the pin implemented by hardware or by the browser? That's by the browser. The, mm, so the browser should prompt the user to enter the pin yeah, in the, so in the window. So I added the UB key via Chrome with a pin required. And then I used Safari, and Safari could just access the key without a pin and just use the first one. I added multiple, but could not select which one, and I was very surprised by that. Mm, sounds like a bug or weird implementation in Safari, but in the end, this, the relying party, the server, should verify that the response also meets the criteria he's requesting. So there it, it should fail eventually and not bypass any any legitimate authentic authentication. Uh, in the response from the browser to the server includes if a pin was entered? So, um, say this here, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, th yes, the, um, this information is provided in the response so that the server can verify this. Yeah, so right. he, the server must not trust any middleman browser, anything like that, no. Yeah, I think then Safari is bugged. Um, talking about uh, business solutions, um, is this uh, fully uh, supported uh, in a business environment where the user is uh, an, a thin client or something, uh, a small device, uh, then remotes into a, a server, for example, um, that is the FIDO2 or similar solutions uh, are p passed through? And is there some limitations? So business environment, you are talking about Windows? For example, for, uh, so I know that for Windows, um, earlier I mentioned the login to the, the local Windows machine. Um, this, for example, requires an Azure Active Directory. It, it's, it's, it doesn't work yet with the local Active Directory, um, so that's a big limitation. Um, I expect Microsoft to add, sooner or later, to add this feature also to local Active Directory. Uh, for other like environments, business environments, I, I'm not aware of any out-of-the-box implementation or support uh, of this. My question was mm, less than the authentication against the Windows or the remote server, but then uh, passing it through into the remote session. So uh, I uh, plug in my FIDO2 dongle and, uh, at my station and on the server it, I can use it in a browser window, for example. Um, so, y you would need a way to pass through the USB device to the client session. So, it's, it's just a normal USB device, not like a special funky like smart card or something? That's right. Um, it's a norm very ordinary USB, USB device. It goes as USB HID class, human interface device, where also mouse or mice and keyboards are... Uh, assigned to this USB class, so that's a very default USB class. Okay, thank you. So if you if you are talking about a VM or thin client, somehow you may need to pass through the USB device, but don't need any specific uh, driver for FIDO. Last last question. Uh, yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. I think time is over. Maybe y you can uh, find me around here. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>